Valley Talk on News Talk 1580 KGAL. And a very good morning. Welcome to Valley Talk. I'm Dave Adams. Yeah, another beautiful fall day here in the mid Willamette Valley. The leaves are turning color and it's just a beautiful day to live here in Albany, Lebanon, Salem area, isn't it? Yeah, maybe if I turn your mic on, it'd be even better. I would be able to agree with you. <laughs> Hello, Dave. Hey, we've got an uh, interesting show today. Have you ever wanted to fly an airplane? Well, uh, there's a gentleman in the studio with a unique idea on how you can have part ownership in an airplane. It's it's kind of like a flying club, only more so, where you actually own part of the airplane. And uh, uh, Yeah, I, I'm Dan Miltenberger, and uh, what I've done is a form a corporation that owns two 172 Cessnas. Now, uh, that would, uh, if you used to uh, buy into the corporation, which owns the planes, you could uh, take lessons, or you could uh, fly on your vacations, or go to uh, lunch, dinner. Uh, it's uh, interesting. Uh, you probably don't think about getting to uh, Boise uh, in three hours, but that's what you can do in a 172. And uh, you can fly to the coast in a half hour. You can get be over there at Newport. You go down to Florence, uh, a very nice place to visit you know if you've been along the waterfront there you know uh, uh, you don't have traffic to uh, contend with when you go and yeah uh, it makes a different way of uh, seeing things and the view from the air is always good so more about that in just a second I do want to remind you to sign up for the quiznos taste on us sub sandwich giveaway uh, submit your entry to dave at kgal.com or call kgal radio at the usual phone number, and then uh, at the end of the show, we're going to pull a name out of the hat, and that person will get a $10 gift certificate from Quiznos in Albany. It could be uh, your choice of sub sandwiches, chips, or drinks, whatever. Thanks to Dale and the crew at Quiznos in Albany, Thank, uh, right next to the old G.I. Joe Sporting Goods location, right next to Novak's Restaurant, uh, for being part of Valley Talk. So... And also on the show today, we're going to be having John Gibson in the studio every Tuesday. You know, we were talking before uh, the show started about PERS and about some recent decisions in Salem about PERS. We're going to have a show about PERS in the future, and John's going to be part of the conversation. And we're looking to talk about this. This is something that is going to be affecting the state of Oregon and is affecting the state of Oregon substantially. And of course, there's arguments on both sides of the issue. We're going to take a look at that uh, in a future program here on Valley Talk. So stay tuned for station promos and we'll talk about that. Today we're going to talk about flying with Dan Miltenberger. So, Dan, this is more than a flying club, isn't it? Because you actually own part of the plane. Yeah, you own shares of the corporation, and the corporation is the owner of the two planes. So uh, all you have to do is uh, uh, buy into the corporation and uh, schedule uh, your time on the, the planes, and you can take them then any time that you're, uh, they fit into your schedule. Why did you decide to do this unique uh, perspective? You know, well, actually, uh, Instead of just having a flying club... Why are you giving them buy-in? I personally like to own things. Okay. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, uh, one thing with a flying club, you if you buy into a flying club, uh, one thing uh, is that you don't have anything to sell. If you have bought in, you just lose your initial uh, buy-in to the club. With this, uh, you buy a share, and when you uh, want to... Uh, uh, get out of it or something if you happen to move out of the area the planes are based at the Albany airport and so it would be inconvenient maybe if you move someplace else and then you could sell to uh, somebody your share for whatever uh, you know you could uh, get for it which I think that they're reasonable right now the shares would be uh, $2,500 a piece and it's, it's like the Green Bay Packers you just buy one share you buy one share. Just 2500 bucks yeah. gets you in. Uh -huh. Okay. And then how much are the lessons and things like that? Well, you see, uh, that's the thing. Um, you uh, can uh, have an instructor, and uh, uh, it'd be what you uh, bargained with an instructor for lessons. And there's uh, a couple of instructors out at the airport that uh, regularly give lessons, and so you just schedule your lessons with them and have the plane schedule for your lesson. And you take care of all the maintenance and everything. That, that, that would be that, the hardest. That's the idea of having a club. You see, you uh, are sharing your uh, hangar fees, your 
uh, maintenance costs and all that kind of thing, insurance and stuff that otherwise, uh, you know, you, you buy it individually and so it's just a, a, a little less expensive way of having an airplane at your disposal. Is there somebody that manages this or who decides the plane needs an oil change or do you just share the wrench, literally? Well, <laughs> here's what happens. Uh, the, the corporation uh, has officers and uh, they uh, they run the corporation and someone uh, is uh, the person that uh, schedules maintenance and stuff and, and takes care of all kinds of things like that. And then there's uh, bylaws and stuff that they can, uh, the president and the uh, uh, so forth, they take care of uh, scheduling votes for things that the club wants to do. If they want to change all that kind of stuff, it's completely up to the club to make the, uh, I, I say club, I, it's up to the corporation to make the corporation what they want it to be. Now, I've, uh, I've uh, based this on what the Salem Flying Club's rules are, but I wanted it to be, you know, where you actually own... Uh, the planes themselves. Now, you know, we hear a lot about, you know, these new regulations on small businesses and everything, and this is basically a small business. Correct. So what kind of paperwork did you have to go through to, to get this corporation insurance, things like that? I mean... Well, uh, you, it's not much difference than doing your own uh stuff because this is uh, not for a uh, profit kind of deal. Okay, so, so, so we're not... It's, it's not a club to make money on, on renting the planes because it's, it's not for commercial use. It's only for personal use. Okay. Like, say, if, if you were a uh, flight instructor and wanted to use the planes for um, uh, giving instruction, you couldn't do that. But if you own a share of the plane and you want to take lessons in the plane, you can have somebody instruct you in the plane. Yeah. The difference being... One is a commercial use where a guy is renting out the plane for himself to make money. And the other deal is where you own the plane and uh, the, the person is only providing the education. Oh, good. So it sounds like minimal intrusion from right government. Yeah. So what's your motivation for doing this? You're not making any money. You know, you're putting a lot of legwork into this. Why do it? Well, uh, you know, it's just like... Uh, <laughs> I built a 10-unit hangar out at the airport, but uh, my reason for originally building that 10-unit hangar was that Albany didn't have any hangars, and uh, people that had airplanes didn't have a place to put them. And I thought, well, I'll just b build some hangars. And obviously you're a pilot. No. No, you're not a pilot. I'm not. My wife oh, okay. is, though. Your wife is. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you're in the aviation yeah. field. Yeah. Yeah, we have an airplane, and so... Uh, yeah, we've had a lot of fun on vacations. Uh, you know, we've traveled uh, quite a bit of the United States, and it's a great way to uh, change up the way you do vacations. Uh, I've been a lot of places, Palacios, Texas. I've been to Florida. Uh, of course, you can get to all those places in other ways, but I don't know that, you know, you're flying over the mountains and stuff, and you see little lakes up there and stuff, and... I remember going north at Albany here, and uh, I'm watching some guy's pickup going across the field, and there's been a bunch of hay bales out there, and this pickup just drives right into a hay bale and kind of bounces it, kind of hit it on its left side. I bet that guy never knew that somebody saw him <laughs> run into a hay bale <laughs> because I'm flying over the top of him. You Did know? you take a picture? Huh? Did you take a picture? <laughs> no. Oh. But we have had a lot of great uh, stuff to to uh, take pictures of. You know, uh, fly up uh, at uh, the Glacier National Park. Uh, the east side is a bunch of waterfalls that are like Multnomah Falls coming off the east side of the ice pack. And then just flying over the, uh, the west part of the... Uh, Glacier National Park. It's just a beautiful place to uh, see great scenery. Even I didn't realize uh, years later after I'd flown over Glacier National Park, I was arguing with a person whether it was better over it or, or in it. And uh, later I did drive through it, and Glacier National Park is good at both 
uh, scene. Yeah, it's beautiful. Atlanta. It is beautiful. Right. I've been there. Yeah, it's yeah. gorgeous. It's great. Yeah. Uh, Road to the Sun is a real treasure. A lot of photographs can be taken from every angle there. Yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous. Cool. So what's the next step here? Where are you in, in your... Uh, it's called Albany Hobby Flyers, LLC? Yes, it is. Okay, where are we now? How, how long has this been in existence? Well, I, I just started a, about two months ago, and uh, so uh, I got my... Uh, I wanted to have two planes, and I just got the second plane two months ago. How many people signed up yet? Uh, I've just got uh, people that are interested. I got three people that are uh, interested in doing it right now. I just had uh, one little ad on the radio here a few days ago, and so uh, I put little flyers up at the uh, airport, and uh, that's about what I've done to promote it so far. And I've got a little ad campaign going on uh, the radio stations for it. Okay. Um, what are the costs per share? You may not want to share this, but no. I guess people do the math; they can figure it out. Sure. How many shares are you selling, and what's the cost per share? It's uh, twenty five hundred, uh, twenty five hundred a piece, and, and how many there's thirty this? shares. Thirty shares. Uh -huh. Okay, that's going to cover the cost of the airplane, and you're just doing this out of the good nature of your heart to say, "Hey, guys, you don't want to buy well, a piece of a plane." Well, when I uh, when I wanted to buy an airplane, you know, uh, I uh, had to pay. Uh, uh, I think it was uh, uh, $12,000 for a plane, and uh, then I had my own insurance. I had my own hangar fees and stuff to pay, and so uh, I was looking at what a club allows you to do, and that's quite a bit cheaper than owning a plane, and then I thought I like to own stuff, and I'm sure other people do too, and so by selling shares in the corporation, it kind of another angle of sharing the cost of having a plane. So for probably a little bit more than it costs you to be a club member, then you actually are a owner of the property. Interesting. John, what do you think? Any questions? My, I guess I'll, I'm a numbers guy. Sure. So 2500 initial. Is there other fees? Because once oh, that... Yeah. There, is, there is a, a monthly... Uh, deal it's uh, ninety dollars uh, uh, monthly fee that you pay that also covers one hour of flying you pay uh, <clears throat> seventy dollars an hour to fly and that covers your uh, fuel and maintenance and then uh, this also is covering your okay that makes sense yeah it, so it picks up all your expenses mm -hmm. and so right uh, right that, that's okay. the way it, that makes sense so yeah, uh, it sounds like a great deal. So you do have to pay some operation costs when you go up and fly. Correct. Well, you know, if you own your own plane, you got to keep it up yeah. too. Right. Right. Yeah. You have to have, you know, annual inspection. Hey, I don't mind paying for maintenance, man. I tell you what, well, when I'm up there, I want to know the oil was checked. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, and so uh, that that's the thing. It just it just uh, fees that pick up expenses, and uh, like I was saying earlier, the. Uh, the corporation can change all the all the uh, rules uh, if they vote on it, and uh, you know if they find that the fees are uh, more money than they need, they could cut them back. If they wanted to uh, upgrade some things and and uh, uh, put in uh, different types of equipment or something, they could kind of like uh, a Christmas savings plan, you know, for new equipment. They could they could upgrade stuff, you know. Or, so speaking of that, gas is the now fees for that purpose. Yeah, I filled up today. Gas is four bucks a gallon now. It was a buck eighty four when Bush left office. Have you seen the same increase in yeah, aviation fuel? Uh, we're paying uh, five uh, thirty, I think. And what gas. was it four years ago? Uh, you know, I don't exactly remember, yeah, so I yeah. hate to say, but okay. it. it, it uh, the I can say the gas is usually at least a dollar more for aviation than it is for uh, car gas and stuff like that. Because a higher octane rating. Well, it's not in count of that. You know, we got a smaller market uh, than automobile gas, and so that sure. gives you a higher price. And you know, it's just like getting boat gas at the marina. You know, right. you pay more for the boat gas right. at a marina. There's not that much of a draw for it. You know. Yeah, I understand. Right. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So if people want to contact you, how do they do that? Okay. Uh, my phone number is 541-926-9477. Yeah. We're talking with Dan Meltenberger of Hobby Flyers, LLC. 
here in Albany. And we'll continue on Valley Talk here in just a moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. By the way, uh, don't forget to sign up for the Quiznos Taste on Us sub-sandwich giveaway, $10 gift certificate at the end of the show. Send an email to Dave at kgal.com or give a call to the radio station, and uh, we will put your name into the drawing. So uh, you can call at 541-926-8683, 541-926-8683, and uh, be a part of the Quiznos Taste on Us giveaway. Also, if you're nonprofit, speaking to a nonprofit today, if your nonprofit has something going on and you would like to get some publicity on it, you can either be a guest on the show or say, well, Dave, I'm not interested in actually being on the show, but I'd like you to pass on my information. Just send me an email, dave at kgal.com, dave at kgal.com, and we'll see your information gets out to the masses. This is Valley Talk, KGAL, I'm Dave Adams, and we'll be back in just a moment. Healthletics Chiropractic Clinic, LLC, reminds everybody, only 8% of the eligible donor population actually bothers to donate blood. New donors are needed constantly to replace those who become ineligible because of age or for medical reasons. So help your local hospitals and blood banks keep pace with the rising need. Be a silent hero. Give the gift of life. Take the time and donate blood. This message has been from Healthletics Chiropractic Clinic, LLC. Remember, with regular donations from everybody, blood shortages will be a thing of the past. The Willamette Master Chorus presents the 2012-2013 season. There will be six performances of three different concerts. The season will highlight the theme, the French Connection, with music from France, as the chorus prepares for a concert tour in France during the summer of 2013. The Veterans Weekend Concert, In Remembrance, will feature Durafle's Requiem, with additional music celebrating and honoring veterans and their families. Next up will be the festive holiday concert, Christmas Mass and Carols from France, with special guest performers. Then in February, the chorus is joined by several outstanding guest soloists. The Willamette Master Chorus is the Mid-Valley's premier choral ensemble, bringing you the finest in choral master works. As a season ticket holder, you receive a 10 to 15% discount. Pick up a brochure at Keith Sandberg's State Farm Insurance in downtown Albany or the Willamette University Music Office or link to their website from kgal.com or kshow.net. The Willamette Master Chorus, under the direction of Dr. Paul Clemmy. Speedway has only one more race in this highly successful, amazing 2012 season in the newly remodeled stadium. This Saturday, it's the Fall Classic. USRA Modifieds, DHRA Dwarf Cars, and USAC Ford Midgets. Log on to TrophyMotorsports.com or like them on Facebook. The Willamette Speedway has only one more race in this highly successful, amazing 2012 season in the newly remodeled stadium. This Saturday, it's the Fall Classic. Willamette Speedway, the greatest show on dirt and the fastest way to family fun. Be there. Lap dogs? Yes, men. Congress is full of people who blindly follow the party line and cave easily to special interests. You'd never confuse Peter DeFazio for one of those guys. Peter DeFazio has never been afraid to go against the flow or make some waves when he believes in something. That's why Peter stood up to leaders in both parties, leading the fight against the $700 billion Wall Street bailout. But this is nothing new. Peter has been fighting to crack down on Wall Street's reckless behavior for years. Peter supported the Wall Street Reform Act, but he's pushed for even stronger protections to safeguard the American people from ever bailing out Wall Street again. And to lower gas prices, Peter has fought big oil and gas speculators who care more about profits than people. Whether it's standing up to powerful Wall Street banks or greedy big oil executives, Peter DeFazio will take on anyone who threatens Oregon families. I'm Peter DeFazio, candidate for Congress, and I approve this message. Paid for by DeFazio for Congress. Less hype, just quality news, sports, and smart talk. From your friends at 1580 KGAL. Hey, welcome back. We're with uh, Dan Nuttenberger talking about uh, Albany Hobby Flyers. Uh, anything else you want to talk about with that, Dan? Well, i just like people to uh, uh, give me a call if they're interested in uh, being an owner of uh, airplanes so they can uh, take advantage of uh, being in the uh, corporation and fly the planes. And uh, my phone number is 541-926-9477. And uh, I'd just like to get people uh, involved and get this going. Well, the Albany Airport seems pretty busy. You know, my sister lives on Three Lakes Road. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, all the time planes are coming in and out. What do you right. think the 
the traffic is out there per week. I mean, I see planes at that Chinese restaurant right. all the time at the end of the runway. A lot of people come in, uh, you know, for that. Also business, you know, traffic uh, at the airport. Uh, it's a variety of things. I don't know the numbers on uh, how many... Uh, I did at one time because uh, I did a report on the uh, the asset, uh, the uh, Albany Airport as an asset years ago. But uh, anyway. Are there landing fees? I mean, no, like, there are no landing okay. fees. Uh, you pay uh, uh, for fuel and, and tie downs uh, at the airport and hangers, if you have that kind of thing. Uh, I Like I, I lease the ground that's on under my hangers, you know. But just to seat. land and have lunch, you just... That, that's right, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. just fly in I'll and have there. lunch and go to one of the restaurants in the area and uh, or do whatever business you got and fly out and there's n no fee for that. But we do have a, a reasonable fuel fee, so, you know, you, a lot of people might just make it a gas stop here. Uh, and uh, anyway... That, well, I can't think of a cheaper way to get into a new hobby. If, I mean, if you wanted to learn how to fly, I can't oh, think yeah. of a cheaper way to actually own equity. Um, you know, you can sell your share if you Correct. move away, like you said. Yeah. So you actually have equity in the in the corporation. And, you know, you have a qualified mechanic. I mean, I, I want to know that if, you know, right. if I'm just coming out to take lessons and things yeah. like that, or if I'm in a club and I know what's going on and I know the routine, yeah, they, then the, I, I am far more confident. The uh, A&Ps, they call them, that work on the uh, airplanes are uh, um, certified by the uh, FAA. And you have IAs, which sign off their work, which are also licensed. And so uh, the aviation... Uh, maintenance is uh, kind of on on certified planes like the Cessnas is uh, really uh, pretty well uh, regulated. You know, you have to have a certain amount of education in the aviation field. You have to have some schooling in the field. You can't just pick up wrenches and start. Right. Oh, you're certified. Things over. Yeah. 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 No. You're, yeah. That, that's good to know. So. Yeah. That's. I think, like this, I think this tube goes over here. What do you think? Well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> when you're working on an airplane. Oh yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta know what how the systems work and and where things go. That's Sorry, right. I interrupted. Go oh ahead. no, go ahead. Oh. Um, interesting. Have you been up in a small plane? Yes, I have. Yeah. I was when I flew up over the Dalles, Oregon. They were doing one of those a uh, dollar a pound rides, and it was that'd be an expensive ride a dollar a pound. You know? <laughs> it maybe a was, nickel a pound, or it was. <laughs> what was it? Uh, it was one of those real kind of, kind of carnival rides. You go up, you go down. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, Discovery ride or something. Something like that. But it was bumpy. Very bumpy. Oh, a lot of turbulence. Yeah, it can be over day. there on the Columbia Gorge. But, you know, I remember one time I uh, had a guy from uh, Corvallis take me up to uh, uh, Lewiston, Idaho. And uh, we got in a Piper Archer, and that's a turbocharged plane. And so he takes off from Corvallis and we just went up about as high as he wanted to fly and we got up to Lewiston and it was just a smooth ride all the way and so I was there for my grandmother's uh, 94th birthday and so the next day I said hey you know that was a boring ride I said why don't we go down the Columbia Gorge on our way back <laughs> and so what the deal is with the Columbia Gorge, you know, it just throws a lot of air around. And so, uh, you know, then you know you're in the air. Actually, most, <laughs> most flying is so smooth. You know, if you used to just drive down uh, any one of our streets here in Albany and just think about what the car's doing, it's bumping along at every intersection at least and where they've done some digging and one thing and another in the street and it sagged a little bit. I said, you get, most of the time, you're getting a heck of a bumpy ride out of a car, but you're so used to it, you don't think about it. You get up in a plane and the slightest little thing, oh, there's a bump. So you're, the, I'm not the only guy that's ever thought of that. I've thought of that too, because, you know, I've flown a lot, and I live in Denver, oh. and now I'm talking commercial jets. Uh -huh. But uh, coming over the uh, Continental Divide is very bumpy, and yeah. a lot of times I was flying into Vegas. Yeah. And going into Vegas is very bumpy, yeah. and uh, I took our, 
my stepdaughter, the best kid in the world, on her first flight to Denver, and the plane was literally, you know, yeah. turning in the air. I know people were mean, yeah. people were gasping and screaming. And <laughs> was this a big plane? Yeah, this is a seven thirty seven. Oh, commercial plane. And I'm leaning over to Judy because this is her first flight, and I'm going, oh. "This is normal, baby. This is normal. Don't yeah. worry about it." And in my head, I'm going, "We're going to die. <laughs> you know, we're going down." You know, and I, I'm looking at her, it is, it, and she's just loving it. Yeah, but it's more unusual to have rough air. Yeah, that was it, very different. But you know, when you most of your flights are not going to be that way. I've, I would say that in the morning especially, it's really smooth. In the afternoon, it tends to get a little bumpy because you get thermals coming up off the ground. Different crops and different uh, topography let the air move either up or down differently. And so as you're going across that, you're chopping through that. I never that's thought of that. Feel. Different and crops have different thermals. That's, exactly that's amazing. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I had not thought of that. Well, this was thermal. It was just like driving down a bumpy road. Yeah, uh, it could be like uh, that. Like a buckboard road. My first it airplane was ride was in a 172. I was probably about 12 years old. And I was thinking when we were flying around, it was in the afternoon, and I thought it was just like going across a choppy lake in a boat. Mm -hmm. It was just pop, 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 pop. It was just, it was just like that. But it will, it will vary depending on how the air's moving. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Very much so. Okay, Albany Hobby Flyers. People want to get involved. They want to buy a. Uh, they want to buy a piece of the real estate, so to speak. Piece of. <laughs> they want to buy a couple nuts and bolts in the plane. Uh, you can't take it home with you, but you own a share in the plane. So, how do people contact you? Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm Daniel Miltonberger, and it's five four one nine two six nine four seven seven. And the name of the company again? It's Albany. Hobby Flyers, do, LLC. Do you have anything on the website? Do you have a website up? I don't. Oh. Okay. I wouldn't either. I might be a nerd. Hey, man. I like <laughs> your buttons. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's uh, been a pleasure to have you on the show today. Very interesting. You know, one of the things that I love is new ideas. And this is kind of a new twist on, you know, an old idea. Flying clubs have been around for a while, but not, you don't usually own part of the real estate. Yeah, so this is interesting. Yeah, this is nothing like a timeshare where you're stuck with it, you know. I mean, you can actually sell when you're done, and there's right. going to be other people out there right. that, that'll want to buy it, you uh -huh. know, so. Interesting. Well, Dan, good luck with this. Keep us in the loop and let us know how it's going. Okay, well, thank you for your time. And thank you for being on Valley Talk. We'll continue with our conversation with John Gibson and all things uh, financial, uh, world affairs, uh, whatever we happen to discuss. Don't forget to get to, into the drawing for the Quiznos Taste on Us sub sandwich giveaway. Uh, send an email to Dave at KGAL.com. We'll be back in a moment. The Osgood File, sponsored in part by LiftMaster Garage Door Openers. Use your smartphone to open or close your garage door anytime from anywhere. This is Charles Osgood. As fantastic as the computer and digital and internet developments have been, we're standing on the threshold of yet more wonders. Scientists have known that in theory a computer using quantum physics would be capable of performing calculations far beyond the capacity of even our most powerful supercomputers today. Well now there's been a breakthrough that could take what's been theoretical and make it real. At the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia, they've been able to store very large amounts of information known as quantum bits using the magnetic orientation of one single atom. Imagine. What we believe we'll be able to do is take our technology, our single atom transistor technology, and move it into the commercial manufacturing world of modern day computer chips. That is electrical engineer Professor Andrew Jurak, a member of the team that's done this. What it could every day it seems there's something new your smartphone can do. Now it can open and close your garage door from anywhere in the world. With a LiftMaster garage door opener with MyQ technology, you can use your smartphone or computer to control your garage door from anywhere, anytime, like right now. And LiftMaster garage door openers with battery backup keep your garage door working, even if the power isn't. Find a dealer near you at LiftMaster.com. Go ahead, look it up on your smartphone. Geico says, let's make life simpler. Look, I'm all for modern conveniences. But ask yourself, do you really need a blender with 23 buttons just to chop an onion? At GEICO, we think life should be simpler. So we make it super simple to save on car insurance. Just one click and you could be on your way to saving hundreds. Come on, people. 
Life doesn't have to be that complicated. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. What are the implications of this breakthrough in Australia? Quantum physicist Andrea Morello, another team member, says it is literally a quantum leap. So you cannot program a normal computer, as powerful as it may be, to simulate and to predict, for example, the way a drug, a new medicine that you're trying to develop, will attach to your cancer cell, let's say. A quantum bit stored on a single atom that one day opened doors beyond man's wildest dreams. Jared Pla, PhD student there in New South Wales. One day this sort of technology could be used to solve humanity's biggest concerns, like the cure for cancer. For openers. It's not true there's no good news, you've just heard some. The Osgood File. Transcripts, podcasts, and MP3s of these programs can be found at theosgoodfile.com. This is Charles Osgood on the CBS Radio Network. Some workplaces, they stand around the water cooler and talk. But then there's workplaces where they talk about the water cooler. I was thinking how long it's been since we had the water cooler installed. Seven years. That's 84 trips by the poor delivery guy. Then, of course, we'd have to restock him, but not with a pure water dispenser from purewater-coffee.com. The macro solutions folks in SIO. 1-800-537-5432. 800-537-5432. Purewater-coffee.com. The macro solutions folks in Sio. Have you heard? Proactive is better than ever. Stay tuned for a million bottle giveaway and you'll also receive free shipping. Do you have troubled skin, acne? Well, we have great news. With Proactive, your acne can heal and you can prevent new breakouts from happening. Don't miss this limited time offer. Give us a call at 1-800-644-7705 because we're going to let a million people try Proactive risk-free, get two free gifts, and also receive free shipping when you call right now. You heard it. This offer won't last long. So call Proactive now and you'll receive a 60-day risk-free trial of Proactive, two free extras, and free shipping. Call 1-800-644-7705. This is our best radio offer ever. Get your risk-free 60-day trial of Proactive plus free shipping. That's right, free shipping. Don't wait. Visit GetProactive.com or call 1-800-644-7705. That's 1-800-644-7705. Clarity over agreement. Expect it from Dennis Prager, weekday mornings at 9 on Smart Talk 1580. Valley Talk continues here in just a moment. We were just uh, talking about uh, the economy, state of it, uh, where it's headed, gas prices, cost of a volt, and uh, (laughs) there's just a lot economically to talk about. And Dan Miltenberger uh, with Albany Albany Flyer is going to stick around with us for the last half of the show here, and we're going to talk about uh, the economy, where it's headed. A lot of concern. What's going on in the front page financial section today, uh, John? Well, front page uh, news is, number one, it's the start of the third quarter, so we have earnings seasons coming out. Alcoa is always the first of the of the Dow 30 stocks to announce, and how, Alcala, how uh, Alcoa goes is normally the way the rest of the economy goes because they build aluminum, things like Boeing airplanes, things like cans for pop, all sorts of the car components, things like that. So if Alcoa comes out and beats earnings, then that's a good sign. The word on the street is is that China is slowing down. Um, we have slowed down. We have cut our second quarter GDP from 1.7, which was anemic enough. We cut that down to 1.2% growth for the second quarter. We're, we're teetering on the edge of a, of a recession. Um, the only positive sign that they had the other day was consumer spending was up. Well, consumer spending includes the price of gasoline. So the reason consumer spending was up is because people were spending more at the pump. So, um, you know, the the people... Well, consumer spending was up just a little bit. Yeah. Slightly tick. Oh, uh, yeah. And it was a con- I heard the same report, and it was accounted for because gas is higher. So right. It took a while for it to, to be tied together that it was the gas increase. So there's no indication the economy is picking up. It's actually slowing down. We've gone from two, two and a half percent GDP growth. Now we're at 1.2. We've gone from, you know, gas being a buck 85 a gallon. Four years ago, I won't use any names, but uh, now we're paying four bucks a gallon. And we have an energy policy that shows an interest in high gas prices. I mean, had we said yes to the Keystone Pipeline, 
gas would be at three bucks a gallon right now because the people who speculate on the upcoming price of gas would know that more fuel is coming onto the market. So they would automatically lower their price in anticipation of that. So when you say no to the Keystone Pipeline, you're basically saying, I'm in favor of $4 a gallon gas. And, if, you know, I'm sorry. I just can't put lipstick on a pig. Where, where do I put no on that? Um, I'm not in favor of $4 a gallon gas. Well, uh, it depends on how you vote. I'll just leave it there. So, uh, but on the other, on the other side of the fact, on the other side of the issues, um, they're kind of pulling, they're, they're calling for a pullback, and it makes a lot of sense. The S&P 500 is up 25% year to year. Um, you can't justify that kind of a move with the earnings that you're getting out of the company. So you have to ask, where is that move coming from? Well, that move is coming from the, the government is, currently buying $40 billion of mortgage-backed securities from the banks every month. So the banks know that they're getting this money coming in, and there's no place to put it. You know, treasuries are yielding the 10 years at 1.62%. You're not going to make any money on the treasury. So you have to go for dividend-paying stocks like Microsoft and Intel and Caterpillar and Boeing and stuff like that. And that's where you're going to get your return. So the banks are actually buying stocks. And that's creating a, bu a bubble in the stock market. So people like me and people like Dan, you know, we're little fish. We're little, little, little fish. I'm, I'm selling, you know. You I'm, can see that uh, Caterpillar is uh, uh, dropping and uh, Alcoa that you talked about, they cut down their production and they have dropped. And so uh, they aren't forecasting uh, uh, things to improve anytime soon. No. Yeah, yeah, that, that, and that's a trend. You can't fight that. So you, what you have is you always have this thing called don't fight the Fed. Now, the Federal Reserve, what is their job? The Federal Reserve has two jobs, full employment and control inflation. That's the only thing that they're supposed to do. Okay, now they're doing monetary policy. You know, now they're in there buying mortgage back. They're not supposed to be in the private market. And they're they're what they're doing is they're printing money buying bad mortgages and putting all that money out there. Well, inflation is too many dollars chasing too few goods. So if I have an apple and you have a dollar, you're going to give me a dollar for that apple. Okay. But now we've got Dan here. Dan stuck his big nose in. <laughs> now my dollar apple is only worth 75 cents because yeah. I got competition, you know, um, but I can say, actually, I want a buck fifty because now you want it, and I can get a bidding war going and drive up the price. That's inflation. That's how simple it is. And when you have too many, how are we going to pull all this money back out of the economy when we stop printing money? That's that's the, that's the trick question. And they're all saying it's looking like right around February, March is where all this comes to to meet the road. And on top of that, you throw on the expiring Bush tax cuts, that's going to affect everyone. Someone and like me, my capital gains is 15%, long-term capital gains. It's going to go to 28. Let's talk about the expiring tax cuts. Uh, there are, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the rule of thought now is that Congress is not going to have the guts to go in there or, or there's just going to be a political fist fight and they're just going to let them expire and say, sorry folks, we couldn't come to an agreement, it's going to, we're going to call off the proverbial cliff. Is that what you think is going to happen? No, I think they're going to you think extend going to them like six months. They'll, they'll extend so. it past the election. I agree with that. And then if Bush... Or Bush God, I wish we had Bush back. Um, <laughs> not really. I mean, he spent way too much money, too, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, I could care less about No Child Left Behind. But um, if Obama gets reelected, the tax cuts are gone. If uh, Romney gets elected, the tax cuts stay and probably get lowered. I okay, mean, let's let's play those scenarios for a little. Let's let's say Obama is reelected, tax cuts go away. What do you think happens? Um, I think that we go back into a recession, but more importantly, I think Israel is jeopardized. Mm -hmm. I think Je Israel is under the bus. And number two, the most important thing about next year's this year's election is the next Supreme Court justice appointment. We've already turned left. I mean, we've already okayed Obamacare, and I'll never forgive the idiot for that. But if Obama gets to elect, appoint the next Supreme Court justice, we're gone. 
Okay, let's talk about Romney. Let's say he's elected, tax cuts remain, and the Romney uh, proposals are enacted. You know, the call for lesser government. What do you think? Uh, the, I, I think the first thing, and j jump in here, Dan. Yeah, you know this stuff, too. Well, I, you know, I, I just, like you're saying about uh, uh, Romney's, uh, I'm, I'm afraid that he's going to do uh, Obama light. He's not gonna. He's gonna have a. You might get rid of Obamacare, but you're still gonna have uh, an Obama light. Is what I'm afraid of. Yeah, yeah. Neither, neither, neither. Certainly not Obama, but even Ryan and, and Romney aren't cutting the budget. They're simply slowing the growth of the budget. So at some point, and it's coming because of this PERS decision from our Oregon legislature. Uh, on both a federal and a state level, we're going to see some pretty big layoffs for school teachers, policemen, firemen, because we simply cannot afford the PERS payments. And so to pay for those current PERS recipients, we're going to have to cut the budget, and that means cutting employees. So well, I think what we see is the uh, teachers' uh, unions and the public employee unions have bargained themselves into a point like the auto workers. And uh, GM laid off a lot of them, and so did Chrysler, uh, because they could not uh, they could not use them. And I can solve the problem. How's that? Hostess. Hostess, the CEO of Hostess came out a couple of weeks ago and said, here's the deal, here's, you know, here's our offer. You get two seats on the board of directors, one seat on the planning commission, and 25% of the company. You vote no, go away. You're fired. You vote yes, we're back in business. And they voted yes. Now they have a stake in the game. They have to. They have two seats on the board. They have to produce shareholder profits. They have to be involved in saving money. They have to be involved in, you know, not just being a parasite, you know, uh, not a parasite, but, you know, just taking without any common sense, for God's sakes. Now they have a stake in the game. Now they have to make a profit. Now they can't have four-week vacations. Now they can't have lavish retirements because they have a stake in the game. You have to make a school teacher somehow have a stake in the game. Otherwise, all they want is gravy, gravy, gravy. Look what do you think Chicago about the teachers. argument? In fact, um, Romney kind of stuck his foot in it, and I think everybody agrees that it probably wasn't the smartest thing in the world to say was that more than half of the people are in some kind of entitlement, Social Security, unemployment, food stamps, uh, Medicare, whatever, and that there's a fear out there that they'll lose that if Romney's elected, and Romney said, they won't vote for me. Not the smartest thing in the world to say. Well, it, 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 it isn't because uh, a lot of people don't pay attention to that deal, but uh, I think when, when uh, things get out of uh, control, uh, you got people eating the seed corn. You don't have uh, uh, anything to contribute, and the society will find not enough uh, taxes. You know, you, just, you can't pay the taxes, and not enough people paying taxes, and you're printing money to make the economy run. And to, I just think there's a end of the game there when you get too many people on the take. You know, you know, we have 300 million people in America, mm -hmm. and 47 million are on food stamps. Right. I drive by Grant Street in the summertime, and there's breakfast, lunch, and dinner being served at the community parks to any kid under 18. Okay. I don't mean to be rude, but the people walking the kids down there are sucking on a big gulp, and they're 50 pounds overweight. The kids eating the lunch are overweight. I mean... Nobody in this country is starving, for God's sakes. You know, I don't understand why this idea of working for something is now a dirty word. It's like I agree with that. Ninety percent of the jobs of unemployment people come in their last two months of benefits when they know that they're going to get cut off. They finally get off and go get a job. Let's hold that thought, and we'll come back here in Valley Talk in just a moment. Banking these days can be pretty impersonal. You've got your big banks, your internet banks, your do-it-yourself banks, and your too-big-to-fail banks. That's why you might be interested in an alternative, Willamette Community Bank. I'm Dave Wood, President and CEO of Willamette Community Bank. We believe you deserve better service without sacrificing a thing. So if you're feeling underserved, make the switch to the best banking option out there. Willamette Community Bank, 
Service like no other, we promise. Member FDIC. Now's your chance to get in on all the hair-raising, action-packed princess fun. Disney on Ice presents Dare to Dream. Watch as Rapunzel lets down her golden hair to tangle with the dashing Flynn Rider and the hilarious Maximus. Go on a mystical adventure through the bayous of Louisiana as Tiana kisses the frog prince Naveen and gets royally jazzed. And become enchanted with Cinderella as she makes her dreams come true. Together for the first time ever, all the Disney princesses you love in a spectacular ice show. Bring your royal family to the ultimate princess event of a lifetime in your hometown. Disney on Ice presents Dare to Dream. The magic begins at $17 for tickets. Additional fees may apply. See RosePorter.com for details. Experience a spectacular Disney adventure at Disney on Ice presents Dare to Dream. Coming to the Rose Garden October 25th through 28th. If you own or manage a business, you need to take control of your transportation costs. You need PetroCard. PetroCard is the largest independent franchise of Pacific Pride, owning over 65 convenient locations throughout Oregon and Washington. With the automatic fueling system from Pacific Pride, you'll get 24-hour access to gas and diesel at thousands of Pacific Pride locations throughout the U.S. Get control of your transportation costs now. Call PetroCard at 1-800-4-FUEL. PetroCard is more than just fuel. This is Shelly Garrett and Ryan Murphy and I are going to be headed to the Courthouse Steps in Albany this Saturday at 7.30 a.m. for the Seroptimus International Run for a Life Walk for a Cause live remote broadcast. Please join us from 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. on the air or better than that, come join us in person as we walk the streets of Albany. The walk begins at 9.15, so come and join us before. This is Shelly Garrett and Ryan the Lion and we'll be on live at 9.20 a.m. K-Show. Willamette Living Magazine brings you the best of our special area in print and online. Locally owned and operated, Willamette Living is the lifestyle magazine of Oregon's Willamette Valley from Eugene to Portland. Every other month brings a new edition packed with engaging local stories, beautiful photography, and offerings from our neighbors in business. Visit WillametteLiving.com to read the current issue online. Find out about advertising your business or subscribe now and have every issue delivered to your home or office. Willamette Living Magazine, your guide to the best of the Willamette. Valley. Want to really know more? Just point, click, and learn from the Mid Valley's best website, KGAL.com. Back on Valley Talk, I'm Dave Adams, and in the studios with us we have John Gibson and Dan Miltenberger with uh, Albany Hobby Flyers. Continue with us as we continue to talk about financial, the economy, uh, just where we're headed. And it's uh, sometimes you wake up and listen to the news and it's it's uh, a little scary, isn't it? Yeah, well, in the course of this show, we will have, our government would have spent $158 million. 40% of that we borrow. So just in the course of this show, we spent $158 million. I think the no, those numbers like that, uh, people don't, we're not realizing what that means individually, you know, in personal debt for Actually, the country. You can go to uh, debt, debt clock dot org I think it is or maybe it's dot com but there's a, a big clock in Manhattan that has the national debt and all mm -hmm. that and it's rolling it's, it's going up all the time and it your personal your own personal debt that you mm -hmm. owe is over fifty one thousand dollars if everybody if every man woman and child would write a check for fifty one thousand dollars we would be balanced balanced <laughs> for a minute or two yeah <laughs> Well, that's too bad. But so, that, is, yeah, that is true, I guess, and so something to yeah, deal I'm trying with. To find it. I'm not seeing it here, real quick. You know, and and right I've now, yeah. right now, we're borrowing that money. Like a ten year note is trading at one point six two percent, right? A year. Yeah, that's what you get back yeah. every year. The uh, ten year note for Greece is yielding twenty five percent. I believe it was twenty five or twenty seven percent. But are you going to get the twenty five percent? Right. And what <laughs> happens when we have to pay twenty five percent to get somebody to to uh, yeah? There it is. US US debt clock dot org. Yeah. I and your personal debt. Let's see what it is right now. Oh. Um, Can you read it? Well, okay. Well, I so don't know if many people uh, remember how quickly 
the interest rate for mortgages went up when uh, Jimmy Carter was president, but it blew me away uh, to see uh, the interest rates get into the teens and keep rising. Okay, now here's yeah. an interesting fact. Okay, okay here's an interesting fact. This is off the website right now, usdebtclock.org, right Debt now. per citizen, every man, woman, and child, $51,115 is, is what it going you up? owe. Is it yes, going, it, it'll, it's going up. Pretty fast. Now, however, no. Okay. Uh, it's not. It hasn't changed while all the other ones have changed. However, debt per taxpayer. Right. Now, let's talk about debt per taxpayer because 50% of the people don't pay tax, and I'm not one of them, so I'm kind of bummed. If you're a taxpayer, the debt is $140,500, basically, rounding up. $140,000 if you're a taxpayer. So that shows you the difference between the people who pay taxes and the number of people who don't pay taxes. So if you don't pay taxes... You know, you it really don't, don't have you, huh? a reason to complain. You know? <laughs> what would you say the Obama argument is that the rich people should pay more because they have more money, so we'll tax them more? Let's talk about that. I know what your answer is going to be, but let's throw it out there because people that are listening to the show that may support the Obama initiative will say, well, you know, why are you having more taxes paid by the people in the food stamp line if you know John D. John D. Rockefeller and the people with more money need to pay more taxes? What would you say to that? I know what I would say, but what's your what's your comeback? Uh, I would say that everybody should pay something in taxes. Everybody should have some skin in the game, even if it's ten bucks. You should have to write a check to the government every year for something, because if you pay that little then you're getting something and then you can always say that i've paid for part of this yeah. now if you're a person that uh, has found a way to be off the tax rolls or the the minimum amount that you earn doesn't qualify you for uh paying taxes uh you don't have anything in there uh every your neighbors are paying for your benefits your and it streets, be, your everything. I mean, it used to be a stigma to be on welfare. Remember? Yeah, I mean, you know, it used during to be, the Depression, a lot of people wouldn't uh, get on any kind of support because they were proud that they could take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And, and what, we, we started changing the words, you know. And now it's assistance. It's just welfare. Just call it what it is. Let's talk about this. We only have like a couple of seconds left. What happened to that ethic that you just mentioned? That's a very good point that you brought up there was a time when you didn't want to be on welfare but now it is more socially acceptable to the point where half the country is on it well i think like it, what it, happened they ch they change names they you know it's uh ge become a generational deal you know uh, the government's got more into our lives uh it's just like i couldn't believe while back here they were complaining about uh they wanted to raise the interest rate on the college loans. Well, what was wrong with that? Why not have a fair interest rate on college loans? You know, I think happened. I think that our parents came out of World War II and, and that terrible depression, and they wanted the baby boomers' lives to be easier. Mm -hmm. And they made it easier, and all the toys were made for us. And then we had kids, and we spoiled those kids. And this is the permissive society that we yeah. have now. Coming up on Valley Talk tomorrow, we're going to talk to the Albany Fire Department about the treasure hunt and then also Fordyce Farms from Salem talking about their corn maze, their produce store, and so on and so forth. Ray Fordyce will be on the show tomorrow. Have a good day. Locally owned and operated, this is the very independent News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis.